Okay, here it does some fantastic lighting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There we go. Yeah. So just like we saw in the concept, it's dark. Uh, it's really hard to see what's out there. And we do that on purpose to contribute to the fear of the unknown, right? You don't know what's back there. We're, we're doing that on purpose. But then just there's just a little bit of uh, uh, life in there just so that it's not completely dead scene. Um, and then as we look above us, we see the, the massive engine uh, and it's, again, it makes us feel small and insignificant, right? It's, it's looming. So I mean, as we're looking around, we see all those effects that you saw earlier in gyms. Now you see it here, steam coming out of the pipes. There's some secondary animation with the moving pistons. It gives life, you know, it communicates that this is an industrial thematic. And then we're always leading the player with a little bit of horror storytelling, a little bit of narrative. We have the various tools and crates. Uh, I love the masks on sign up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Quite thematic. Safety first. Exactly. This space is game about safety. <laughs> okay, so in this state, uh, now, now we're in a state where it's starting to you know, we've powered the uh, room. So the engine is slowly starting to rotate a little bit of uh, life to it. Lights, you can see the blood. You'll have to speak up. We've booted up an engine. <laughs> yeah, it's uh <laughs> Let's follow the blood trail then. Let's do that. <laughs> no. It's always a good idea. So here we go. This is the iconic um, poster that, that we saw earlier. You can and see the different treatments on the blood, like the one that is still wet, blood that's got dried up on the side. Yeah. More is more. More types more, of blood. More. more blood states. More blood conditions. Yeah. And then we finally get here, uh, and we're going to activate the engines. Turn it on. Let's turn it. And we look up above us, and then we can see this glorious, you know, VFX. The engine's fully operational. It's open. It's spinning at full speed. It's like a, it's like a beating heart. Uh, the room has come to life, and we have completed the transformation. And then, as we look to the right, we witness the scene of a horrific bloodbath. And uh, yeah. Some bad stuff happened there. Again, just that, just that great, great teamwork between the environment artist and the story artist. Like, yes. I mean, you can really, you, you, you can guess what happened there. Mm -hmm. And then we're back into darkness as we make our way down, and then we take one last look at the engine and then the smoke-filled room. And that's it. There's those sparks. Yeah. As the door closes, we start applying mix changes to the sound. When the door is fully closed, we move the sound source to the window and apply even heavier mix changes. Love in the 
dark thanks you for your little spark he could not see which way to go if you did not twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are up above the world so like a diamond in the sky when the blazing sun is gone when the since this room has no window we are cutting the sound completely as the door closes we have the ability to choose what sounds are let through the doors so not every sound will be called if we do not want them to be The system also works vertically. The way the system works is by creating a map of the areas that are reachable by the player considering the surrounding openings like doors and windows. Then, when a new sound starts playing, we can check in the map we have previously generated if the sound is audible and what is the shortest path to Isaac. We update this map at regular intervals but much less often than the sound sensors, because it's expensive and its data does not change very often. But having this information allows us to calculate a more physically accurate position of the sound very quickly. Now let's have a listen to where we are at with our updated version. When we are designing a weapon, we approach them in many different layers. All of the red and blue boxes outlined in this picture represent another layer that is being played on each shot of the weapon. Now let's take a listen to some of these layers one at a time so we can really hear each element that's being played. That's all we have for the plasma cutter today, but let's take a sneak peek at comparing the original pulse rifle with our in-progress version.